Never Stop Learning, week 276. We're gonna take a quick look at the horizontal type tool in Adobe Photoshop CC 2015. All right, so I'm gonna cover this tool as if this was the first time you're looking at this tool. So I'm not gonna go over every single feature, but I'm gonna go over the features that are, gonna, that are gonna help you out on your first run at it. Now, if there's some features that you'd like for me to cover, make sure you let me know in the comments. All right, so to activate the tool, just hit the T key on your keyboard, and that's gonna activate the type tool for you over here in the tools panel. All right, notice your cursor changed up and you're ready to go. Now, over here on the top, Right in the center, I'm gonna click once. I got that flashing cursor and that lets me know I could start typing in the letters that I need. All right, so with the caps lock turned on, I'm gonna type in Adobe Grind. Now I no longer wanna type any more letters here. So if I were to try to activate another tool, like let's say the move tool, I hit the V key. I'm gonna to continue to add letters here and I don't want that. So let's delete that guy. What I'm gonna do, I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna hit Command Return. If you're using a PC, it's gonna be Control Enter. All right, so that just accepts that change and you're telling Photoshop, I no longer wanna add any more characters. All right, so I've got my text set up here, but I wanna make some changes to it. Now, if let's say you need to add letters to this, all you have to do is click in here once and right where you have that cursor, that's where you're gonna start adding those letters. So keep that in mind. You're probably gonna to wanna to use the arrow keys to move this around or just use your cursor to the specific area you want. All right, so command return to accept that change. Another way to work is over here in the layers panel. Just double click on this T. All right, now I have all of my text selected, which is great because I could go ahead and start making some edits that I need. But let me show you one more way. Command return to accept that. All right, you can click and drag, but I'd rather just do several clicks here until I have the selection that I wanted. All right, so here it is. I've got all my text selected, and now I'm ready to increase the text size. So I'm gonna hit Command Shift greater than to increase the text size, or Command Shift less than to decrease the text size. All right, uh, if you're using a PC, it's gonna be Control Shift greater than and less than. Now keep in mind, I'm using a US American English keyboard, and the greater than is sharing the same location as the period. And less than is sharing the same location as the comma. So it's the two keys that are in between the M key and the question mark. Now if you're using a keyboard from a different country, you'd have to look it up for your specific shortcut. All right, uh, another shortcut I like to use is gonna be Command Shift C to center justify my text. But uh, these keyboard shortcuts are kind of limited because they're only gonna work in the text that you have selected the way you see it here. All right, so I'm gonna accept that change by hitting Command Return. Now, if I were to try to use those keyboard shortcuts right now, they just wouldn't work. So let's say I wanted to try uh, to write justify my text. I would hit Command Shift R, but that's actually the keyboard shortcut for lens correction. And that's not what I want, so let me get out of here. Now, I have to come over here to the top. And if I want this guy to be right justified, I'm gonna click on this, and now it's right aligned. Here is the left aligned and center. All right, uh, over here, you can change the font size. So click and drag when you see those little double arrows and that's gonna give you like a little scrubby slider type of situation. So here I'm gonna increase the text size and now I'm gonna decrease the text size. I could enter in a specific value here, like let's say 36, or I could click on this drop down menu and choose one of these commonly used uh, presets. All right, I'm on a Mac, so if I hit return on my keyboard while I have the type tool activated, notice that uh, I have the font highlighted and I could go ahead and change that font. So I'm gonna change this to Doc Heavy, which is one that I like to use. I'm not sure if that works on a PC. I haven't tried it on mine yet. So if you could let me know in the comments, that'd be great. All right, cool, so I already got this set up. Now a couple other features you might wanna see is over here. You've got this warp, I'll cover this in a separate video, but really quickly, you have a style. Just choose one of these styles and then make adjustments to them over here. So a real basic one is this bend. I'm gonna go from a positive to a negative and notice now it's gonna dip down. And right here, you're just basically controlling how far it's gonna dip down. All right, remember you have all these different styles to choose from. I'm gonna hit cancel to get out of that. This guy right here is gonna bring up the character panel along with the paragraph panel. Now, these are gonna help you get the exact look you're going for. You wanna come in here to play around with the kerning, tracking, letting, all that fun stuff. 
All right, if you click on that same icon again, it's going to dismiss that panel, and you're going to see in a little bit how that panel is actually really useful. All right, the last feature over here is going to be 3D. If you click on that icon, it's going to change your text into a 3D extrusion, and it's going to change the workspace up so that you're in a 3D environment. All right, now that's pretty much all the basics that I wanted to cover there. I know I went into some uh, a little bit more advanced stuff, but uh, not too deep. Now, the last thing I wanted to show you with the same tool is, check this out. I've got the horizontal type tool activated. I'm going to click and drag starting from the top left, moving my way down to the bottom right, and then release. So now what I've created is a text area. All right, so I'm going to paste in some text, Command-V, and that's going to paste in the text right here, keeping within those bounds. All right, so that's going to help me out in a lot of situations, but check this out. Um, the font looks kind of crazy, and that's because I have upper and lowercase letters. This font doesn't play well with lowercase letters, so I'm just going to hit Command Return to accept that change and show you how to reset this so it actually looks good. All right, so this is all jumbled up and it's a mess. Now, the first thing I thought of is coming over here to the top left, doing a right click so I could reset the tool, but uh, it did help me out a little bit, but all it's doing is resetting the tool, and that's why we have this justification here. What you want to do is bring up your character panel because in the character panel there's this little flyout menu. Click right here and then choose reset character. All right, so this guy's kind of hidden, but it's going to get you out of a jam a lot of times, trust me. All right, click on reset character and it's going to take a couple seconds, but it's going to bring everything back to the default settings. All right, so now I can actually see all my text here. I could increase the text size. Let's go with one of these presets. Let's go with 36. All right, so I'm going to dismiss this panel, and now I have my text. It's set up and ready to go, and notice everything is right inside of that text area that I defined using the horizontal type tool. So there you have it, folks. That's a quick look at the horizontal type tool in Adobe Photoshop CC 2015.